I think the only thing that I could pull out of out of being young and, and being happy was the fishing, you know. Being down the river before anybody else got down there and sitting at the net waiting for the, the men to come around to help pull the net, you know. That was the only thing in the childhood that I remember that was good. Fishing has been my livelihood almost all my life. Uh, ever since I can remember when I was old enough, we were taught we didn't just fish for ourselves, we fished for everybody else. It is still that way today. It's something that, that should be kept in our tradition and should be taught to all the youth that are, because it's an art that's dying. There are not too many people out there who like to fish anymore. Only thing with the fishing is we have to look after it, you know. It's been commercialized too much. The fish are starting to dwindle. I remember a time when you could actually walk across the Skeena River on the back of the fish that came up. There were so many there, you could just literally see them bubble across the Skeena when the runs came up. And now you, you have to search and see where, where they are. And, uh, you don't know if the runs are going by because there's so few. Say to like Nation, he's my fisherman now. He, he stepped up. When, when I couldn't do anything anymore. That's what we need more of, of the young people coming and saying, hey, you can't do that anymore, let me do that for you. My name is Dachnid Slaski, which means eagle soaring high above. I am from the House of Medik, Gispagwada tribe, in the Gitsalasu territory, Chimsian. Uh, my given name is uh, William Bolton. 12 and 13 years old, I was running through the bush to stay away from the residential school and the, uh, and the 60 scoop. I've said before and I'll say again, I never had a childhood. And that's something that I don't wish on anybody. Everybody needs to have a childhood, to have something to, to, to remember, to go back on. All I remember is grief, just fighting just to live, just to make sure my brothers and sisters ate, just to make sure that they had enough things to go to school. And, and that's all I remember of my childhood. Uh, and, uh, you know, my last 25, 30 years that I spent with my late wife, she was really instrumental in, in helping me change my life, helping me become who I am in my company today. She was like a native lady, but she was white. My family was dying and I was a drug addict. I told Cheryl if I wanted to change, I'd have to come home. You know, if it wasn't for her, I really don't know where I'd be right now. And it all came from her being sick, her getting sick and, and, and on her way to death. That changed me, that, that made me see who I was, that, that I stopped everything I was doing so that I could take care of her the way she took care of me when I first met with her. And, and she wanted us to be married that's my grandmother that said this time. <laughs> uh, a lot of people were, were trying to give Cheryl funny names and Aunt Isabel said, no, this is wrong, and took Cheryl and adopted her into her house. That, that equaled the, the, the strength of mine. And Cher, Cheryl became a wolf, did it in a feast hall in front of my family, and that was huge. To see my family be humbled like that. And Cheryl, you should have seen her boy, I tell you. Whew, sorry. Her heart was too big for that hall when she found out what was going on. And it was shortly after we got married that we found out she was dying. A lung transplant, there was nothing they could do. Her heart started giving out. I, I quit everything. I quit drinking, smoking everything. I believe that the love I had for Cheryl is, is one that was pure. If I didn't love her as much as I did, I would not have changed. So they said she was going to die within a year and she lasted 18 years after that. And she, uh, I believe to this day she wanted to make sure I was okay before she went. Yeah, then she went home and now she's not shuffling anymore. <laughs>